Hey guys, it's Caleb with White Metal Games. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've posted a video, but uh, with after the holidays, I just got really busy with stuff, and uh, videos just got put off to the side, but we've been busy here, so I thought I'd show you some of what I've been working on. Uh, to be honest with you, what's been keeping us busy has been mostly the same old, same old. It's been business as usual. Well, since Necrons did not get released in the first wave uh, in March, um, we've been continuing to sell Necrons. So walkers, tomb blades, sides, all those things have continued to go off. Um, Cryptex have slowed down quite a bit, but everything else we've been selling quite a bit of. A lot of um, um, uh, tomb blades, those have been very popular. Um, that being said, I was excited when the new nids came out, so let me show you what we've been working on here. Um, so I did uh, purchase some of the new nids, um, some of the... Uh, Tyrannifex and Turvagon kits, which I think are, are very nice. Um, one of the cool things about them is that they have tons of extra bits. Um, each kit yields lots of extra stuff. You get all these extra cannons and giant spore sacks and these Turvagon underbellies. So I'm, I'm planning on using some of this in the next few days to come up with some sort of poor man's Turvagons and poor man's um, uh, Tyrannifex is using um, this basic torso. I've been using this for my poor man's Turbigons for a while now, um, and I have some extras, some leftovers uh, from uh, from my previous project. So I plan on using a couple of these and releasing some poor man's Turbigons and Tyrannifex. So if you don't have the money for them, um, hold on, and I'll be releasing some of those probably in a week or so. Just look for them over the weekend. Um, I picked up a, a few of the Tyrant uh, Hive Tyrant kits too. I know that sounds like a lot, but the reality is I had sold all my Hive Tyrants months ago in converting swarm lords so now i had space in my army for some new ones um the hive tyrant the flyrant kit comes with these wings that are meant to go into these top sockets but it kills one of your weapon spaces and the feet are kind of designed to look like scything talons i think with the idea that as this guy descends on his prey in avian raptor like fashion he sort of plunges these into his prey but if you don't want that if you wanted like devourers or something like that you're going to need those arm slots open so what i did was i just took the arms or the wings clipped off the tip and just mounted them to the second socket here i'll try to get as close as i can so you can see there's the first joint there's the second joint i just pin them right in there use a little gray stuff to cover up the gap and i think it looks pretty good and as you can see balance is just fine balance is just the way the other one does um, it's actually a fairly well designed model and you couldn't have done it with pewter the plastic is a nice way to make this work so kudos to gw i think they did a good job there uh, been working on some terrain. Uh, I've been working on a couple of videos for um, uh, the internet and um, hoping to get them posted soon. These are a couple snow hills I made. Uh, I'll have an, a complete how to make video posted soon. Um, but I'm, I wanted to do a, a snowy, icy tundra board. So these are two hills for the board. Um, yeah, basically, they're a combination of polystyrene, um, spackling compound, uh, paint, of course, and then this top mix is really just um, baking soda that I use for flocking for poor man's uh, snow. Um, I wanted a lot of the blue to be coming through to sort of keep that icy cold look to it. And I think they work pretty well. They're both aesthetic and, and usable. Um, they're based on MDF hardboard, so they are ready to go, I think. Um, and I swore I would never do another one of these, but we did do one more dominatrix. Um, my original idea was to do it and then cast it, but after doing some math on how much the mold was going to cost, we decided not to cast it, um, as well as the potential for copyright infringement. So we made this one. Uh, this one is a lot different than our old ones. Um, it, although it uses the same basic parts, um, we've taken a lot more time. Here you can see that we have actually scaled all of these plates. And if you take a look at the close detail here, we've actually filled in all of those individually. It's taken about 50 man hours to get this thing together. Finally, it's almost done. We've added head plates and scaled those up. We gave them a set of mandibles. We still have to do the jaw. Um, this is the concept art we were working from. You've probably seen this picture online before. Um, it's kind of this massive, uh, I really like this artist concept picture. I think he did a great job. It's kind of like a cross between a tyranid and I don't know, maybe, um, what do you call that guy? The big dinosaur guy from back in the 60s, and I'm not a true dork if I can't remember his name. With my, Godzilla. Kind of looks like a Tyranid Godzilla kind of guy, so I really liked it. Um, so we're finishing him up now. We've got some pieces over here, some front hands, arms, um, hoofed feet, which you can see we put some Legos in there to start to build the structure of them. Use anything you can. Um, these are his front scything talons. We've got two of these. These are massive. And just to give you an idea of scale, uh, let me see if I can find a marine over here. 
so here's a marine and here's the talons this thing is massive you know cleave through buildings it's going to mount something like this so it's going to be like that it's about appropriately sized and then it's going to have a second set of arms right there the tail's going to have some spikes coming off of it and then he's got these hoofs for feet um so he's almost done he's within we'll be done with him in a couple days i should have a finished project for him by the weekend he will probably be going up on ebay for sale just to sort of take care of some old bills i've got but he is not going to be cheap my previous ones went for about 300 dollars a piece and based on how long this guy's taken us he'll probably go up for over a thousand dollars and we'll just see if anyone bites and if they don't hey he's going to be in my collection for a while um we also built a cannon for him which we're finishing up now the back part here looks kind of rough because we just literally used it as a structure we're going to cover all that up with plating but here's the bottom of it you've got this massive tubing um, here's the front you can see the the cannon of itself i borrowed these sort of spike ideas from the pyrobore cannon and that mounts somewhere back here so that when it's fully done let me see if i can switch hands i'm sorry there we go so it's gonna be something like this it's gonna mount like that um so it's a little hard to see now, but uh, you know, once fully mounted, it's just going to be a massive biocan on his back. And it looks a little big at first, but then you look at the pictures that this artist came up with, and you can see that it's fully half the length. Uh, you know, it runs from you know mid back between his arms all the way to halfway up his head. Ours is a little farther back. We probably should have clipped the tube and made it a little bit shorter, but you know, as our first attempt, we got a little overzealous. Um, so it's going to ride a little far back. It's going to ride, you know, uh, around his, his, um, leg, which is farther back than I would normally prefer. But that being said, you know, live and learn. So next time, if we decide to do it again, if we ever did it again, we would shorten it. But for now, not a bad way to work it. Uh, I've got these spares from the Tyrannifex kit, these gun barrel or these gun sacks, and we're going to use those on the side to also give it some, um, some more detail. Um, so that's going to look sharp. I'm, I'm excited about seeing that thing all together and, and glued up and, and finished. Um, so that's about it. You know, we've been working diligently trying to get caught up on everything. And, um, my, uh, my sculptor in residence, Nick is going to be helping me do some painting soon. So I should have some pictures of my first, um, units for my frost giant army, um, which is a space wolf army. Um, so that should be up soon. I should have some pictures of that. And uh, I'm hoping to get into some more painting in 2012, less, my less modeling. With GW actively releasing so many more models now, it's harder and harder to compete, uh, I feel. Um, so many of my models, my Tyranid and my Necron models, are going to be you know, back at GW soon. Um, I sold like 20 Space Thunderwolves in, in a few weeks, and then they released the Thunderwolves, and it's like the sales just dried up, of course. Which only makes sense. Um, I did sell a few Turvagons after the fact, though. That was kind of fun. People still liked the Locust pattern, which I had briefly for a while. Um, anyway, so that's about it. Um, if you are just tuning into this blog, my name is Caleb, and uh, I am a conversion artist for hire. I do painting, converting, custom terrain, custom models. Uh, I've done tons of Tyranids, Chaos, and Necrons, as well as regular Space Marines. I've even done Primarchs, terrains, cities, buildings, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, if you're interested in having a commission done, contact me at caleb at whitemetalgames.com um, or just reply to this video. I view all my comments on a regular basis. So, you know, hopefully uh, take care, get in a game this week, and happy wargaming. Thanks.